I'm Dan Chung from Atomos and today I would like to introduce you to our latest innovation which is 5.9K ProRes RAW recording from the Panasonic Lumix S1H into our Ninja 5 5 inch HDR monitor recorder. How is that done? That's done using HDMI out from the camera and into the Ninja 5 and this is the third camera that we've now launched that uses this innovative system to get raw out of these Japanese mirrorless cameras and into our 5 inch monitor recorder. Um, in addition to recording the 5.9K full frame raw, you can also get a Super 35 raw, which goes up to 60 frames a second. Um, the 5.9K is up to 30 frames a second, so that's all the cinematic frame rates, the 20, 20, uh, 398. Um, 25 and um, 30 and then with the Super 35 you can go up to 59.94 in um, 4k so slightly lower resolution but higher frame rate which is great for those uh, slow-mo shots and then in addition to that we've got and you'll notice I've got on the front here I'll show you an anamorphic lens I don't know why it's not focusing there you go um, and that's because this has also got a, uh, a Super 35 anamorphic 4x3 mode, which is perfect for um, using this camera in a, in a more cinematic way using these lovely anamorphic lenses. Um, you'll also notice that uh, I've got a PL mount adapter on. This one's from MTF Services, uh, and that allows you to mount these anamorphic lenses directly to the S1H. Um, in addition to that, when you're running it, and I can turn it on, uh, we can now de-squeeze that picture, the anamorphic lens that you choose, whether that's a 2x or a 1.5x squeeze. So a very powerful system that allows you to not only shoot but monitor anamorphic correctly. Now on top of that, what you're ending up with is um, a complete system which, you know, when you hold, put it together like this, actually handles really beautifully. The image stabilization in the S1H works really, really well when you are um, hand holding, even with anamorphic lenses. There's a special mode to stabilize anamorphic lenses. Um, and we've had uh, some film shot with this, which uh, hopefully we can show. Uh, and the results are, are really impressive. I think you'd be, uh, most people, most viewers would be hard pushed to tell the difference between this and some of the more expensive cinema cameras in the, in the perhaps the, the price bracket above this. Um, and that's because the sensor technology in this is, is really, really good. And then when you combine that with the 5.9K raw recording, um, that just gives you an amazing amount of flexibility for post-production. Um, talking about ProRes RAW, for those of you who don't know, it really is um, an amazing codec because it allows you to actually combine the speed and efficiency and ease of editing of, of ProRes, regular ProRes, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, um, but then giving you the flexibility of RAW to be able to manipulate it. And there's more detail in the near to, high, near to clip highlight areas and in the shadow areas than you would get in a regular compressed codec, whether that's ProRes, AVC HD, uh, XAVC, any of those other codecs. This, this is gonna give you more than that, um, and, but it's gonna give you in a very, very edit editable form. So I can even edit this 5.9K ProRes RAW on my, it's hidden behind here, a little Mac Mini, uh, up-to-date Mac Mini, but still a Mac Mini, um, uh, and it still manages to cope. So it's, it is amazing that you can edit on a relatively inexpensive machine, um, and you know I can edit one or two streams of 5.9K RAW perfectly easily. Now what else has happened with the ProRes RAW ecosystem is that uh, more recently uh, we've had support from more NLEs. So initially it was just Final Cut Pro 10 that supported it, but then we've had EDIUS on the PC platform, and then more recently again we've had Adobe coming out with a public beta of uh, Premiere Pro which now edits ProRes RAW files. So very rapidly this is becoming a, a codec of choice for um, people who are looking to get that extra quality without having to have the heartache and the, the, the wrangling problems of, of trying to work with um, a less uh, efficient RAW codec, uh, which um, if anybody's tried to use some of the older RAW codecs you'll know they're, they're quite uh, processor intensive and, and 
whilst the results are very good, it, it can be a real pain to work with. So this is a really good alternative, and if you really want Japanese camera ergonomics combined with uh, the latest in recording technology, there really isn't a better way to go right now than ProRes RAW with an Atmos recorder and uh, a top flight mirrorless camera. Um, so there you have it, the Ninja 5 and the S1H. So if you want to know more um, about this particular setup, um, the films that we've had shot with it and uh, the technical specs um, and even perhaps to, uh, to buy one, then please head across to uh, atmos.com uh, forward slash ninja5.